Okay, so let's start this tutorial by installing Next.js and also React Query, of course. I'm going to use npx create-next-app at latest to get the latest version. And I'm also going to use TypeScript. So I'm going to have double dash ts and that will install next for us. And it's going to ask us a few questions here. Uh, what is your product name? Yeah, maybe next uh, react-query. I don't know, name it to whatever you want. And it's going to take a little bit of time here to install this stuff for us. All right, it's finished. So if we list here, we have the next dash react query. So we're going to navigate inside of that folder, cd next dash react dash query, like that. And we also want to install react query. So mpm i react dash query and make sure to run it inside of the folder that you created for your product. And I'm gonna start up the code editor. And the first thing I want to do is to clean up some stuff here because I don't want them to be there to distract. That's why we're gonna remove all the styles. So remove that folder, uh, the public folder. Yeah, it should be there, pages. We don't need an API folder for this tutorial. Uh, and we need the app and the index and the index looks like this now so I'm going to remove some stuff here we don't need the styles the image we're going to use that one we don't need a head and the next page is the type for the page in uh, next.js so for now we're just returning something like the div that says start uh, and of course this one should go so for now, I'm going to go back to my console and I'm going to type in npm run dev and it's going to open up. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course I removed that one. So I have to remove the styles from the app also like this. And I go back, I open up the local host, but here you have it start. So it's working and I'm going to inspect it here. So we have the console open here like that and we're ready to go so we have installed react query and we have uh, made a little bit of cleanup here on this stuff and for this tutorial i'm going to use an api that is for the spacex the spacex api and we have this public endpoint here that we can use for our data and inside the index.tsx, I'm only going to be on this road so i'm not creating any other pages here we're going to do it on the index page we have the next page, the image. We're also going to need something from React Query for this. So we're going to import curly brackets. We have something that's called dehydrate. And we have the query client. And we have the use query. That's what we're going to import from React Query inside of this component. Uh, and now I'm going to create a small function for us to fetch the data. And I need some types for that because we're in TypeScript. So I create a type. SpaceX data. So I'm not going to type out only the properties that we use. So if we look here, we have this structure of the data that we get back. And I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to use two of them only just to show you an example here. So I go back to my code editor and I'm going to use the name. It can, it's going to be a string. And then I'm going to grab the patch image and its position in links. We have a new object and the patch, new object, and we have the large image, and it's going to be a string. So that's the types for the API. And now I can create the fetch function that we're going to use with React Query. So const get SpaceX data equal. It's going to be an async function. And then I'm going to wait. I'm going to do a one-liner here just for this one. So I await, I have a parenthesis, I await again. And the reason that I await two times, I think I've mentioned it a hundred times now in my videos, that is, first I await the data, and then I'm going to await it when I convert it to JSON. So await fetch. And we're going to grab that URL up here, this one. So copy this one. The SpaceX API is on github.com forward slash r dash SpaceX forward slash SpaceX dash API. So that's the API that I'm using. So I'm pasting it in here. And just at the end here, I'm going to convert it to JSON. 
So this is hopefully going to fetch the data for us. But before we do anything at all, we're going to move inside of the underscore app.tsx file inside of the pages folder. And this one is created for us when we created the next project. But I'm going to modify this one a little bit because we need to provide our application with a query client. React Query needs the query client and we need to wrap our whole application with that query client. And we do that inside of the underscore app.tsx in Next.js. So let's see here. I'm going to need React. So we import React from React. And we're going to need an app props, just as we're importing here. And then I'm going to import some stuff again from React Query. We have a component that's called Hydrate. We have the query client and we have the query client provider like that. And we import it from react-query. So we have our component. It's typed correctly here by default. It shows us the app props. This one is going to get the component, the main component, so to say, for the application. So we can wrap anything we want around this component if we want to. For example, in this case, we want to provide it with the query client. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to create a query client, const query client equal. And I'm going to place this one inside of a use ref. You can also place it inside of a state in React. And they tell you about this in documentation on React Query, that you should do it like this. So you ensure that the data is not shared between users and requests. So that's why we do it like this. Otherwise, it can be messy if you have different uses and different requests. By doing it like this, you make sure that that won't happen. All right. So react dot use ref. So we have a parenthesis and we create a new query client. And actually, I'm also going to bump up the font size here for you guys. Something like that. So we have the query client and we can wrap our component here. Instead of this one liner here, I'm going to do parenthesis and something like this. And we wrap the component with the query client provider. And it needs the client. We have a client prop and we provide it with the query client. But this is inside of a ref, so we have to have dot current. So that's the query client. We move the component up. Yeah, it's yeah, it shouldn't be a capital Q, a small Q. That's the const that I created here. All right, but we're not finished here. We're going to use the hydrate component. So hydrate. And this one has a state prop. And from the page prop that we get here, Next.js provide us with this one. We're going to create uh, our own prop later. So from the page props dot, we're going to call it dehydrated state. And yet again, we move the component inside of that one. And that's everything we need for this component here. Uh, query, we're not going to need that one there. And, and this one, the hydrate, what do you do when you hydrate and dehydrate something? Well, essentially, we're going to place everything in the cache in React Query on the server, and then we grab this cache and send it in by a prop that's called the dehydrated state. So that's what we're going to do. And this hydrate component that we import from React Query, make sure that this dehydrated state prop, make sure that you can use this dehydrated state to hydrate your components. And when you hydrate your component, you can say that you fill it up with the data that you already prefetched on the, on the server. So we hydrate our components with the data that we already fetched. And hopefully this will make sense soon as we create the query and everything in the index.tsx file. So this is everything we need in the underscore app.tsx file. We make sure that we create the query client and we provide it down to our application. And we also make sure to use the hydrate component because this is the one that's going to take care of all the hydration of the data that we fetch on the server. All right, so move back to the index.tsx. And inside here, we have the home page. And first, we're going to grab some data here. So we're going to use query from React Query and do it like you always do client side. Const, we have the data, we have is loading, and we have is fetching. 
like so and equal use query parenthesis we have the query key i'm going to call it spacex and we have our function get spacex data so this is hopefully going to grab the data for us and we can make sure that we have some data console log data save it also make sure that you save all the files go back to the application and you can see that we have the data here so we're successfully fetching it from the spacex api and now we're going to do some tricks here so we can fetch it on the server instead and also we're going to change this return statement to something more meaningful i'm not going to style this or anything but we can actually show the data so we have a header from the data yeah and i haven't typed this one i created this type and in react query this is a generic the use query is a generic so you can send in the type spacex data and we will get some nice auto completion here we have the links and the name and in this case i want the name and then we're going to show the badge and from the next forward slash image i imported the image component that you always should use with the Next.js because it will optimize the image for you. So image src. I'm gonna grab the link from the data dot links dot patch dot large. All right. And we have an alt and we have a name of patch dash image, for example, and we set the width to 500 and height is gonna be 500 that and we close it and now it's going to complain because this one can actually be undefined and the image component doesn't like that so before we return this one here we can check if we have some data if not data return div yeah no data for example and also we can have if is loading we return a div that says loading you can also combine these two if you want to do that to check for no data and stuff like that but sometimes it can be good to separate it out so you know that yeah we have no data or it's just loading and that's fine so let's save this one and try it out now we have some error yeah and this one is because next.js wanted to specify the host names where you grab your images so we have to do that also so inside the next.config.js just below here, we have a property that's called images and another property that's called domains. And this is an array. So you can specify your different domains. The image here is going to be from imgur.com. Save it. And I think we actually need to restart the server for this one to work. Yeah. So go back to your terminal, break it, and then type in npm run dev again. Go back to the application reload it and there you have it it will work now so th that's fine we have the name here the starlink 4-6 and we have the nice little badge here so it's working but now we're grabbing all this on the client so you can actually see very short here the loading and we don't want that loading state because when we grab it on the server the data should already be there when we show the page so that's what we're going to fix now so go back to the index.csx file and in next.js we have something that's called uh, get static props so just below here i like to create this function at the end here i'm going to export an async function export async function get get static props and this is built in in next.js so it has to be called like this and here we have to create a new query client yet again so we don't mix up the requests and the uses and the data and all that stuff that can be messy so const query client equal we create a new query client something like that and we're going to wait the query client and on react query we have something that's called prefetch query not prefetch prefetch query and we can also give it some types if we want we have the spacex data for the types we have parentheses we have the query key spacex this one has to be the same 
as we're using up here. Otherwise, it won't recognize this as uh, the data that we already grabbed from the server because you can mix server side data fetching and client side data fetching. For example, you can have another use query here that only fetches data on the client, just like this. And it can have another query key. But in our case, we won't have the exact same query key here. And we have the get SpaceX data fetch function like this. So this will make sure that we prefetch the query, just as this one says here that we imported from the React query library. And we have to return this. So return, we return an object with the props. That's also an object. And we have our prop that's called dehydrated state. And then we use the dehydrate function that we also imported from React query. So it has these handy functions and components for us to make this as smooth as possible. So what we're doing here, we're prefetching the data and we send it along to the props and we, and we create this prop that's called dehydrated state. And on this prop, we dehydrate the data that we get. And then inside of our app component here, we have this hydrate component that will take this dehydrated data and hydrate it to our uh, components. So it's really important that inside of here, from the page prop, props that we grab the exact same prop here that we created, and we call it dehydrated state. So it's important that it's the same because it's this one that will get this prop here on the page props and send this data along to our components and hydrate the components with the data. So go back to the index.tsx. And the cool thing here is that we don't have to change anything up here because we're fetching the data here. And now this data will get prefetched. And this query will fetch it from the cache that's already there when we show this component. So we try it out. You can see that we have the data, but we actually not have a loading state now. If you look here, it's not showing now. So we can actually remove this one. We don't need to have the is loading. And if we console log is loading, it's going to be false. You can see that it's false here. And that's, co that's cool because, yeah, we're not loading any data. It's already loaded when we show the page. And that, my friends, is server-side fetching of the data. So in Next.js, you have these get static props. So you have to do this little special thing here to grab the data first on the server. And then you also have to wrap your application with a hydrate component and make sure that you send this data along to your components. So that is everything you need to do to fetch some server-side data with Next.js and React Query. I hope this made sense and that you learned something in this tutorial. And if you like my stuff, hit that subscribe button and notification button and Tell the world about my little channel here where I teach mostly React stuff and TypeScript stuff, but a lot of other stuff also. And hopefully I see you in another one.